knew exactly what I wanted. I just didn't know how to get there. Mentorship is gaining the confidence of the person whom you're going to mentor. HB has really opened up avenues for me to flourish as a scholar. The HB year was the turning point of my research as a scholar. I seek ways for engagement with other humanists. Break boundaries and forge ahead in humanities scholarship. A retired academic from Rhodes University. I was in the School of Journalism and Media Studies for many, many years. I'm retired in Cape Town and, and I'm loving it because of this work with the African Humanities Association that I'm doing. The African Humanities program was confined to five African countries only. The African Humanities Association has opened up to the whole continent. So it really is a continental association. As a mentor, you must be able to get excited about the other person's work because often the writer of the text is tired, is exhausted, is fed up. They don't think their work is any value anymore. And you come in and is, as a reader and you say, God, this is amazing. Look what you're saying here. Look what, it's fantastic. Now you've got to complete this. You've got to energize. You can't fake that. You know, you really must care. So what I love about, especially African-American quilting, is that I love the stories and I love the colors, and it's beautiful. You make something beautiful. So quilting is like mentoring because first, you know, a quilt, you see the finished thing. A quilt starts off with little blocks. You don't know what the big picture is. You are making it as you go through engagement through shaping, not this block here, put it there. As the mentor, when I read the whole thing, I get a sense of what it will be, but that's not it. We are building it. And when it's a long text, I have to be reminded. I have to have cues, keep me on board, excite me, I get tired, keep paragraphs short, keep change the length of sentences because you want to change the level of engagement. So it's a combination of holding the big and the nitty gritty. And a Zoom session, a, a two hour Zoom session is like amazing. And they usually are sort of two hours is, is a good session. You can't do it in an hour because it's that human engagement. It's the sparking of ideas. It's the back and forth. Hi, Carly and Laurie, nice to meet you both. I'm speaking here from South Africa. I'm not sure where you are, <laughs> which is quite exciting. So the purpose of the Zoom is for us to talk about our different experiences as mentors and as a mentee. Well, it was it was a really exciting conversation. So the way Laurie and I did it was to write each other uh, sort of meta notes. Laurie, how was that for you? I was very excited that uh, my book was considered uh, for review mm -hmm. and that AHP suggested that uh, I would be working with very experienced writers and mentors. Uh, Carly, mm -hmm. can you just elaborate a little bit, I think, about managing that transition four people from a PhD dissertation writing to a manuscript, because that comes up again and again. A thesis often has that sort of Lego quality, that yeah. one has built blocks yes. of stuff together. Whereas when you get to the monograph, um, what I was very keen uh, was for Laurie to find his own voice, mm -hmm. to craft a voice, Mm -hmm. um, because the PhD voice is often sort of a quite inaudible voice. 
one is one is writing to show how much you've read, mm. but then when you get to the monograph, you are meant to stand up and be amidst those loud voices. If you are a kind of uh, a new arrival, you know, in the big boys, big girls club, you can feel a little bit, uh, um, a, a little frightened. Mm. But of course, with a good mentor, the mentor will uh, encourage you. The one person that I mentored, Anna, she would um, get up at two o'clock in the morning and work from two o'clock to like six o'clock. I'm amazed at the women because the, the strength is incredible because women have many burdens. I believe in an egalitarian system. I don't believe, yes, you can have hierarchies, they help to make it work, but I don't think universities ought to be hierarchical places. They shouldn't be power places. Who cares whether you're an ASPROF or a prof or this or that? There's a richness now, I think, that the African Humanities Association has that it has the possibility of going deeper. And I think it's now important for African academics to take charge of the development of the humanities on this continent.